All right, ladies and gentlemen, today is the day. Today we are ready to overview the classes in Throne and Liberty. Not just some tops in Excel, but real classes with videos and with skills and everything. Every class will be explained in this video. And we started. My name is PLK. Please subscribe to this channel because, you know, about 99% of viewers are not subscribed. Like, what the hell, guys? Please do that. Anyway, let's start with the crossbows, shall we? We have this perfect video from the Throne Liberty fan. Let me show you these guys. Please subscribe to them because they are providing some interesting information. And let's see the video first, right? The quality is kind of eh, but we can see something. So the crossbows user can dash, fast attacks, dash again, some debuffs, some buffs on yourself. And it's kind of super fast middle range to close range user still ranged right kind of interesting kind of fast paced i don't know about the damage but it's definitely it will debuff your enemies and it kind of looks pretty cool right and we have all the skills it's pretty outdated like six months ago but still you have all the skills and you have all these passive skills and you have all the weapon mastery so we don't we will not check weapon mastery you can check it by yourself the link to this thing in the description almost all the passive skills are about to increase your chance of debuff which is like less armor or more damage by the piercing damage but let's talk about the active skills so starting with the ultra fast firing which is fire projectiles at target three times like you can move and you can do the additional attack with additional damage three times in a row, which is like, you know, faster attacks, right? Now we have a evasive parry technique, which is you just dash to the side to avoid some damage from the AOE attacks. Most likely, I don't know, can you evade the direct attacks? Most likely not, but let's see. And you can do it once a second. So cooldown is one second. So it's pretty fast, right? So you can do it pretty fast as you see in the video, right? Also, we have this onslaught stance which is the buff for yourself. Increase offhand weapon attack chance by 50% for 9 seconds. I don't know, can you use one crossbow or it, like dual crossbow every time? But still, the second hand like have less weapon attack chance, which is less chance to land the hit. Cool down 36 seconds and for 9 seconds you will have this increase. It's basically more damage for the 9 seconds. Then they have a debuff. So you do the 150% damage by this shot. Cool down is 9 seconds and it will be for 12 seconds so you can put it whole time to one enemy and by 60 percent chance you will decrease defense of your enemy and on your passive skills you have increase of the chance for this skill as well also have rapid leaf so you move faster and your range became 30 percent more for three seconds which could be used in pvp you know to avoid things and to make more distance with the enemy manual recoup technique you switch hp to mp which is you know could be super useful and thorn gale for nine seconds you will have to fire an additional projectile which time when you have a range attack which will be 35.5 percent as a from the base damage so it looks like the gameplay for this crossbow user will be like you buff yourself to debuff your enemy then you move fast and you try to kill as fast as possible like you have 12 seconds nine seconds of debuffs on them you have 9 seconds debuffs, buffs sorry, on you, and on that time you're super, super damaging. Then you need to switch to other enemy. You don't have any AoE attacks, right? So it's like single target attacks. This character will be kind of support debuffer for the party. Like, just imagine, you have a boss, you have a PvP, so you debuff the enemy and all other archers, maybe mages, because it's also ranged, right? Have additional damage to this thing. So it will be super cool. And also you can move fast. You will not die super easy because you can run, you know, faster and you can shoot from the distance for some point of time. So it's like middle range of the set, close range, super fast, super paced class, which is not the damage dealer, I assume, but I don't know. Mostly as a debuffer plus damage dealer. Pretty cool. Now daggers. Everybody love and hate daggers. So, I mean, daggers in Lineage 2, it was so iconic to play as a dagger. Like, everybody hates you because you kill from the, you know, from the shadows. But let's see what we have here. So basically, what passives daggers have. They have skill critical damage, crit against poison targets, 
evasion increase, poison chance increase, faster movement after killing the target, and increasing melee hit. So basically, everything about your poisons, about your crit attacks, and about your hits. Now let's check the skills by themselves, right? So what we have? We can inflict a venom, which is poison, to your target with the stacks. Can be stacked upon 10 times and every stack dealing some damage. But it's super important to have poison stacks on the target because it will influence other skills. They will do more damage, right? So we have Avenger Stance, which is like you defend yourself. It's like a guard buff skill, but you will consume stamina, but then you will attack back your target for 230% of base damage, which is pretty cool. Predatory Strike. You deal the damage equal 240% of base damage plus 7 and you increase your critical hit by 400% when the target remaining health is less than 50%. And also you have these passive skills like skill critical damage increase. So you know, you combine this stuff, you combine the poison and also next deal, brutal incision. So, deal damage by 310%, base damage plus 63, and if the target is under the influence of the something, like curse, burning, or poison, so maybe in your party you have a mage who curse or burn your target, also you have a poison, increase damage by 2.5% of base damage per stack. So just imagine that the target have stacks from mage, from crossbows, I don't know if it's stacks or not, right? And poison. And then you do this brutal incision. You just one shot the target. The next one, Shadow Strike, it's basically teleport behind the target and do the critical damage. Also, Camouflage Clock, which is invisibility. For 8.5 seconds, you have invisibility and also only one minute cooldown. Pretty cool, right? And you have an increased chance by 1000 for 6 seconds for heavy attack. I don't know what is heavy attack. Most likely, we will have some different attacks, but this thing will influence that. And Mark of Death. So upon successful landing on the target, this skill deals heavy damage, which is from the previous skill, right? Camouflage Cloak. So open yourself to the PvP from the Camouflage, then you poison your target, then you do some stuff, and then you do Mark of Death, which will combine everything, all the debuffs, all the poisons, and it will deal damage with additional dealing damage equal to 21% of the base damage per one stack of the poison. So it could be 210% from the 10 stacks. It's super huge. And uh, base damage is 540%. So this thing will one kill definitely people. And this is Duggars, boys. It's a super fast class, as you can see. You don't have many AoE attacks and also we don't have this attack. When it teleports on different targets, maybe it's like additional version or increased version of this one. Yeah, you can silence chance on legendary, you have epic also inflict the silence poison, but I don't see any skills which will teleport on multiple targets to do the AoE attack, because it's outdated, but most likely you have some AoE attacks, mostly you will work on the, you know, poison everybody, uh, so you like click your buff for poison, then you do the AoE attack, then everybody is poisonous, and then you start to click them one by one with your skills, with the criticals, right? That's the dagger boys. Looks cool. Now we have a great sword. It's the huge warrior with a great sword. Looks pretty cool. And what we have on the passives? We have maximum health increase, more health, more attack damage, critical against the stun targets increase, right? Hits will restore your mana. After successful stun, increase damage by five stacks. So you can increase your damage by the stun target for like 65%. And after your dash, you will increase your movement. Let's see the skill. This is two passive skills, right? What, what I'm talking about. Mortal Rage. You can boost yourself upon reaching 5 stacks, increasing skill damage by 65%. I don't know, it's like for 5 stacks, 65% for or each stack. But if somebody is stunned and you can stun people, you will increase damage, right? And also you have this. Upon using the movement skills, your stride become more resolute. Increase movement speed by 26 for 3 seconds. So basically, what you want to do, you have stun skill, you want to dash to the target, you want to stun it, then you want to do two or three damaging skills, and then just run to another target. So let's see. We have first skill, which is like, okay, so you're doing three things for everybody. It's like alien attack, and the last one will be for single target. 
Then you have Iron Point Parry, which is like defense skill, kind of like we have with the daggers. So you will defend yourself for some amount of time and then you will do some damage, about 150% of base damage plus 90. And you have a chance to stun the target. Got it? Now you have an acute dash. You basically charge to a target and do some damage. And you make more damage if you are far away from the target. Every matter increased 12% of your damage deal. Then you have stunning blow. So you basically stun the target for some amount of time, plus some damage, and then you do this. Does blow. So it deals damage equal to 440% of base damage plus 52, which we know is super big. I mean, normal weapons will be like 20 damage, 30 damage maybe, 40 damage max. This will deal huge damage. And you will deal 50% more damage for stun, blind or sleeping targets. Huh? Da Vinci Spirit. You will have resistance for 80% for upcoming damage for 6 seconds. And also, you will restore health equal to 8% of the accumulated damage every second over 6 seconds. Which is like kind of tanky, right? And we have this passive skills to make more health to your character. And also, you have passive skills. More health you have, more damage you deal. I mean, everything together, kind of cool. And you have Destroying Tornado, which is you are doing the will wound for 12 times and you're doing great damage to everybody. That's your main PvE skills. Now we're talking boys, because with crossbows, you have like single target. It will be pretty hard in game like that to grind. You have some AoE with daggers, but here it's like two of these eight skills are AoE, so you will definitely grind more and faster and easier than these other classes. So great sword. Looks like pretty decent class with like tanky, first liner, with great damage, with stuns, and you can run towards your targets so they will not run from the PvP. That's cool. And welcome from the future. This series are taking too long, so it's the next day. Let's go. We're talking about longbow right now. And with longbows, boys, we have the following. We have the passive abilities, which is same direction as the wind hits with more damage. That means we will have the wind in the game and wind will influence your damage as a longbow user, which is, I mean, that's super cool, right? And we have more distance, more damage, more damage from your heavy attacks. Our effects increases the damage. More damage when you don't move, like it was in Lineage 2, this class. I don't remember the name of the class, but it was Human Archer. When you stay on the ground, you can hit more damage to the target. Super cool. And more damage by fixed targets, which is binding targets or maybe rooted targets, you know. And now let's talk about active skills. What do we have? The first knock. Typical standard attack skill, 270% of base damage plus 18, right? And also it's increased damage by 5% per 1 meter of distance from the target. So as the whole user, you should be as far as possible for the skill, standing still with our turn on, and just killing the targets. The next one, Overtaker. It's basically the same like with the rogues and other classes. When you evade the shot, you have possibility to the fury attack, which is three seconds to fire three hours to the target. Firstly, you can bind it. And secondly, you can have a chance to evade the hit. Binding arrow. It's simple, small damage and you can bind the target. And then you will do more damage to this target. Also, this is the binding, right? So other classes like mages and also the crossbows, I think, they will do more damage to the debuffed target. Decisive sniping. This is just the hard attacking skill. 24 seconds cooldown deals damage equal to 540% of base damage plus 95 and increases critical hit by 600 based on the percentage of the target's remaining health. So as I understand, when the health will be low, you will do the huge critical hits. It's just to, to finish the target, you know? Grace Aura. Always maintains an aura skill that increases health regen by 45 for self and party members within the 16 meters range. Effects is based on our effects and our effects increases by 600% for 6 seconds upon use. I don't have any clue what does it mean, but with an hour working, your damage will be also increased by the passives. Cool, cool. Deadly Maker has a 90% chance to mark a selected target for 9 seconds and you can share this mark with your party members, increasing every party member hit when attacking the marked target by 340. As I understand, 
the hit is the chance to land the hit, which is you can hunt the bosses because bosses will be more critical to hit them. It is like in World of Warcraft on the high level in the raids. If the tank can hit the target, he can do the aggro, right? And this is the same here to the damage and everything else. And also, every critical hit landed by you or by your party members will decrease the cooldown of this ability by 3%. So it could be like, you know, non-stop, non-stop. And the last one, intensive strike attack. It basically, you reset the last skill that you used. So for instance, you can do the decisive sniping and then you can do the intensive strike attack and then you will come back with decisive sniping and you will kill the target for sure. So let's, let's talk about this. Looks like this is the huge damage dealer class, right? And this class also doing the aura of HP regen. This will be super helpful for the party. You have the big damage, you need to stay on the ground, you need to bind your target, and then you need to do critical strikes from the long possible distance. Pretty cool? Actually, looks pretty cool. All right, boys and girls, we have longbow, we have daggers, we have crossbows, and we have the great sword. Pretty interesting classes, and now we start to understand how the party will work and what classes will do in the party content in this game, and also how you will feel yourself during the grind, during the PvP. It's a little brief look from the above, right? We will test it on December, but still, this is the chance. I'm already starting to prepare the next three super cool classes that we still have in this game, which is my boy Mage, which is the Sword and Shield, and Tom and Ward. This will be super interesting video and it will be in part 2, so look for it on this channel. I was happy to see you and, I mean, I will see you next video. And please subscribe and, you know, and like the video for the content and for everything. If you love Lineage 2 and if you, you know, waiting for Throne of Liberty, it will support my channel. Thank you guys, bye.